Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louie Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the significance of implementing rules and regulations of the Vintage Vehicle Regulation Act. This week's Spying Chopper shall be about the importance of wearing seat belts. Showcase this week shall have the van from Toyota, the High Ace Super Grandia Elite. While for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the first day of the Maranao Autocross. All these plus the latest use in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The DOTR's plan to privatize the EDSA busway is getting a lot of interest from private groups some of whom are already initiating moves to bag the contract for concession. Anglewide Construction Corp is proposing to construct an Integrated Terminal Exchange, or ITX, as the northern counterpart of the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, the southern endpoint of the EDSA busway loop. Department of Transportation officials are expressing support for establishing an ITX north of Manila, even without knowing details of the megawide proposal, which is seen as an initiative aimed at bagging the contract to operate and maintain a privatized EDSA busway. The DOT had earlier aired plans to privatize the EDSA busway. Megawide is the same entity that built the PITX and is expected to bid for the EDSA busway concession or contract while planning to submit an unsolicited proposal to construct an ITX in Monumento. While still awaiting details of the megawide proposal, DOT officials are already saying an ITX is needed north of Metro Manila to become a staging area for provincial buses. They say the DOTR can realign routes of provincial buses to the northern ITX to limit the number of provincial buses entering Metro Manila and EDSA. The plan to privatize the EDSA busway is a good initiative if it brings a more accessible, safe and efficient transport for commuters. Meanwhile, cycling advocates win one battle to save one protected bike lane from being removed in Metro Manila. Makati authorities and developers have decided not to remove protected bike lanes on Ayala and replacing them with what they called sharrows or shared lanes. The decision was announced in a joint statement from Make It Makati, Ayala Land Inc. and the Makati Business Club that said Ayala Avenue will continue to have physically protected and enforced bike lanes with bollards to separate cyclists from other vehicles road studs for better visibility and with enforcement through the Makati Parking Authority. This followed a series of conversations with cycling and road safety advocates during which it was agreed to have Ayala Avenue remain a safe, convenient, and inclusive transport corridor for all road users, including pedestrian, 
commuters, cyclists, and motorists, the statement said. It was also revealed that a technical working group will be created to consult commuters, cycling, and road safety advocates on improvements in transport schemes on Yal Avenue and the Makati Central Business District to include bicycle lane designs. Meanwhile, groups like MNL Moves, a group pushing for more efficient and safer transport systems in Metro Manila, is challenging the public to continue pushing local leaders, political and business, to take risks, change direction, test ideas based on evidence, and implement changes to build a genuine people-centered urban transportation for Metro Manila. Advocates for a better and more efficient transportation system and greater use of active transport modes like cycling in Metro Manila and other urban areas should gain confidence from the recent to-do in Makati in convincing authorities to make urban areas safer and friendlier to cyclists. Continuing, the NLEX and the SC Techs have taken great strides towards becoming safe and modern world-class tollways. And this year plans to invest more in upgrading its toll collection and traffic management systems. NLEX Corporation is investing 282.5 million pesos to upgrade its electronic toll collection and traffic management systems at the North Luzon Expressway and the Subic Clark Tarlac Expressway. Publish reports announced that the NLEX will upgrade its servers and install new radio frequency identification antennas and speed cameras at NLEX and SC Techs. Around 80 toll lanes at NLEX will be equipped with new antennas to help facilitate more efficient RFID transactions. Four speed cameras will be installed in both Tarlac and Subic bound portions of SC Techs to track speeding vehicles. Various servers at NLEX SC Techs will also be upgraded for improved performance and reliability. According to NLEX Corporation President and General Manager J. Luigi El Bautista, these enhancements are part of the company's thrust to provide safer and more convenient journeys, along with the drive for continuous innovation and customer service excellence. Motorists should reciprocate the initiatives and investments made by NLEX and SC Techs by respecting speed limits and driving responsibly and safely in the tollways. And finally, the end of March should see a section of the NLEX connector open to motorists and help reduce traffic congestion on major thoroughfares in the city of Manila. The first completed section of the NLEX connector will be open to motorists by the end of March, just in time for the expected exodus of motorists heading out of Metro Manila during the observance of Holy Week. The opening of the first five kilometers of the NLEX connector from Caloja to Espana is expected to reduce traffic congestion on busy streets of the city in Manila, including Espana Boulevard, Abad Santos Avenue, Rizal Avenue, and Laxon Avenue. According to NLEX Corp, completion of the second section of the NLEX connector, the 3km section from España to Santa Mesa, is being accelerated and slated to be completed by the second quarter of the year. The NLEX connector is an 8km elevated expressway from the Caloacan Interchange on C3 Road and heading towards the Masalang, España Boulevard, Armagsaysay Boulevard, and ending at the vicinity of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines in Santa Mesa, Manila. The 4-lane elevated expressway is aimed to provide faster access to several areas in Manila, including the University Belt, stimulating economic growth by improving the mobility of motorists and boosting overall productivity. Elevated tollways are expected to make it easier for motorists to move around the metropolis. We should see motorists benefiting from the completed section of the NLEX connector during the Holy Week exodus out of and back into the metro. And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The implementation of rules and regulations of the Vintage Vehicle Regulation Act will take effect in April. Motoring Forum discusses some of the salient provisions of the IRR. Public Act Number 11698 or the Vintage Vehicle Regulation Act was enacted back in April of 2022. The implementing rules and regulations of RA 11698 was signed by Land Transportation Office Chief J. R. Togade on January 30, 2023. The IRR takes effect on April 17, 2023. It is a long wait for vintage vehicle owners who lobbied hard for the passage of RA 11698, which would allow them to register and use their precious cars, which otherwise won't happen without the law. 
In essence, Aria will accept vintage cars from such laws as Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999 and the Seatbelt Use Act of the same year. Under RA 11698, vintage vehicles are not required to meet the anti-pollution, safety road use, and other standards that are not enforced at the time of their manufacture, either for LTO registration or for use on local roads. It also allows the registration of classic and vintage cars whose papers or documents have long been lost or are covered by the Vintage Vehicle Registration Act. The IRR for RA11698 defines vintage vehicles as those that are at least 40 years old, reckoned from the date of manufacture whose chassis, engine, steering assembly, and suspension assembly are either original or authentic or whose body has not been altered in general appearance. The IRR excludes replicas and reproduction of vintage vehicles. Also excluded are vintage vehicles with modern engine replacements. Other salient features of the IRR include registered vintage vehicles manufactured on or before December 31, 1967 are exempt from the Seatbelt Act of 1999. Vintage vehicles manufactured on or before December 31, 1970 are exempted from the prohibition on the importation, registration, and use of right-hand drive vehicles in Republic Act No. 8506. Vintage vehicles with lost papers may be registered under a vintage vehicle subclassification subject to certain conditions. Vintage vehicles not previously recorded or registered with the LTO and with no evidence of ownership can still be registered subject again to certain conditions and procedures. The IR also provides the following. Minimum standards for the inspection of vintage vehicles. Requirements for the importation and exportation of vintage vehicles. Procedures on the restamping of the chassis number. On-site registration of vintage vehicles at permanent exhibits and museum. Vintage vehicles distinctive license number plates. Vintage vehicle owners and auto enthusiasts lobbied hard to get the act passed, and it should be interesting to see if the implementation of the IRR will result in huge numbers of vintage vehicles being registered. That's our Morning Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. You are back with us here on Motoring Today, and we now have this week's important motoring tips. Starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Kung marami kayong sasakyan na nakahinto sa intersection, keep in mind that the first to stop is the first to go. This way, maiiwasan ang banggaan at iba pang aksidente. Continuing with this week's edition of Morning Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Spying Chaper this week. Payong stoper lang kaibigan. Ako si Alejandro Patosa, isang kapwa niyo stoper. Huwag kalimutang magsuot ng seatbelt sa tuwing kayo ay papasada. Gawing prioridad ang kaligtasan habang namamasada sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuot ng seatbelt. Siguraduhin maayos at gumagana ang iyong seatbelt bago mamasada. Huwag mo rin kalimutang paalalahanan ang pasahero na nakaupo sa harap na magsuot ng seatbelt. Tandaan ang paggamit ng seatbelt ay isang tiktibong pamamaraan o pangmanatiling ligtas sa oras na anumang aksidente. Ito po si Alejandro Patosa, payong super lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa nyo super.
Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. Sports News, the 2023 Philippine Rallycross Series just got off the great start last February 26 at a new venue, the Driftwoods Action Park in Indangavite. A lot of old faces showed up, including last season's class champions along with newbies to the sport of racing on dirt and gravel courses. The first round of the season is a day stage with racers again competing in classes defined by engine sizes or vehicle types. The competition is all about setting the best times around the course with each racer given three tries, the best two being totaled for his or her official time. Round 1 saw JP Palitan topping Group 1 for cars and engine with 1,300cc and below displacement on board a Toyota Vios. Also in a Vios, Karoy Calico came in second with JP Dizon ending up third on a Toyota Wego. Driving a Honda Civic, Paul Santos ruled Group 2 for cars and engine displacements of 1,301 to 1,600cc. Second was Carl Celeste on board a Toyota Corolla. JP Palitan was third using a Honda Civic. On board another Corolla, Carl Celeste moved up a step to first place in Group 3 for cars with 1,601cc to 2,000cc engines. Paul Santos dropped to second with Steve Akayan scoring a third place finish in a Toyota Corolla. Group 4's cars with 2,000cc and above engines and Paul Santos is back on top of the Honda Civic. JP Polentan is second, also in the Civic, with Steve Akayan again in third in a Toyota Corolla. Mike Reyes ruled the open class on board a Subaru Impreza GC8, edging Paulo Santos in a Toyota RAV4 by just 15 hundredths of a second. Arlen Reyes was third in a Mitsubishi Lancer. Open to SUVs, crossover pickups, MPVs, and AUVs, the UV class was topped by DJ De Guzman in a Toyota RAV4. Avin Tonko was second in an Isuzu D Max. Raul Asunchon was third also in a Toyota RAV4. More in the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. This Race Weekend takes us far down south to Marawi City in Mindanao to witness highlights of the first day of the Maranao Autocross Battle of the Champions organized by Dan Held at Ground Zero of the Marawi Siege. challenge kami kasi mga lalaki pero yun na nga para mas lalo namin mapapantudayan niyo kung gaano kami kagaling mga babae mas madali yung race track dito kaysa yung mga nakaraan namin mga race track kung dito compare mo doon iba kasi ang rules doon kung baga walk in hindi ka masyado talaga maka, tsaka makakalaban doon more professionals mas pro at least na challenge ako sa PAX pagsali doon sa Manila sa Clark Yung race track kayo, mas masikip pero mas enjoy, para, mas, para may challenge ka, more on chicane siya. This is going to be a series. So for this year, we're planning to have at least three races. So this is the start. And then maybe two or three months from now, meron na kami mga nakaschedule. And hopefully, sa susunod, we will improve the event. Today, we have an estimated of, uh, for Saturday, estimated of 60 participants. And then tomorrow, we will going to have uh, at least 30. Kasi yung tomorrow, yan yung Battle of the Champion. So ang nangyari kasi, I was planning to uh, invite all the top caliber drivers for one event, one one day event. 
But then, kawawa naman yung mga locals, yung mga andito sa Lanao, dito sa Ulta, Marawi City. So I decided to make it two days. Parang qualifying ito, yung top five, maglalaro bukas para sa Battle of the Champions. Yes, we will give them a chance, yung ibang mga locals. Yes, I would like to thank uh, Mayor Mahul Gandamra of Marawi City for the support. Si Governor Bombit Adyong, yes, for the support also. Tapos, yung host natin, President of uh, MSU, Basari, Sultan Basari Mapupuno. And of course, all the organizers, Team Dog, yan yung grupo namin. Thank you sa kanilang lahat, all the officials from MSU, especially yung PKF, peacekeeping force natin, tumulong sa marshalling, in securing the area, of course. Yung uniform personnel natin sa Army and sa PNP, pati na yung sa traffic ng Marawi City, and also yung Karancho, andito sila, para mag-ano ng traffic natin. So thank you very much for the ano, support. It should warm the hearts of local motorsports aficionados that all across has taken hold far down south and appears to be thriving and giving joy to a city that's seen much suffering. Perhaps one day Morawi can be part of the Philippine All Across Championship Series. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Kailangan nang maaasahan Kailangan nang matibay Pang matagalan Kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo Kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up on yung negosyo Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up with Isuzu Trap is Strata athlete, confident to the core. Our car of the week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. This edition of Showcase takes us a closer look at the Toyota High Ace Super Gandia Elite. Filipinos have a love affair with vans. Over the years, automakers have found success providing vans to families as well as traders and businessmen needing shuttles for passengers or cargo. Then automakers began rolling out vans for mealer utilitarian people carriers to more luxurious and comfortable rides for families, providing vans for the low to the high end of the market. Toyota has a high ace a popular vehicle for providers of shuttle services and for families. It has also rolled out the high ace Super Gundia Elite to cater to the market for higher-end luxurious vans. The top-of-the-line high ace projects its imposing size at 5,300mm long, 1,970mm wide, and 1,990mm tall, but nonetheless projects elegance in class. It also comes with a long wheelbase at 3,210mm and clears the ground by a good 175mm. The fashion of the high ace Super Grandia Elite looks both classy and modern at the same time with a design that, like profile and rear, should age well. It is modern not only in design but also with exterior features and functions starting with the bi-beam LED headlamps and integrated turn signals and automatic leveling device. The Super Gandhi Elite also comes with LED front fog lamps, headlamp cleaner, rain-sensing wipers in front and intermittent wipers with mist in the rear, rear window defogger with timer, rear roof spoiler and cool 17-inch alloy rims shot in 23560R17 tires. The large sliding doors on both the high A Super and are powered and making ingress and egress so much more convenient, especially with smart key entry system integrated with the push button start. In here, the Super Gandia matches the classy look and elegance of the outside with lots of leather and trim and wood for accents. The cabin has room for 10 in seats and sconce in leather. 
Up front, the driver enjoys the comfort of a six-way power adjusting seat. The front passenger just slides and reclines. The best and most comfortable seats are in the row just behind the driver, power adjusting captain's chairs with ottoman. Two more captain's chairs are behind those. The rearmost bench seat can accommodate four passengers. All occupants in the van have use of cup holders and bottle holders within easy reach. Toyota counts 21 of these in the Super Gundia Elite. Ambient interior lighting adjusts for color and brightness. Other comfort and convenience features in the Super Gundia Elite include power speed sensing door locks, power windows for driver and front seat passenger, outside rear view mirrors that power adjust and retract, 12 volt outlets, 7 USB ports with 6 in the rear for charging devices, sunshades, electrochromatic rear view mirror, and automatic climate control with nano heat technology that purifies the air and keeps the cabin smelling fresh. The infotainment system in the Super Gandhi Elite features a touchscreen display and plays CD, DVD, MP3, FLAC. It comes with aux port, Bluetooth, T-Link for both Apple and Android mobile phones, K2 technology, and six speakers. While most people employ drivers or vans for families like the High Ace, owners themselves can enjoy driving the Super Gandhi Elite. The driver's seat is quite comfortable and well bolstered. Six-way power adjusts and the steering wheel that tilts and telescopes makes it easy to get the perfect driving position. Grab the leather and with wood accents, the steering wheel provides good, comfortable grip as well as very convenient buttons and switches for such functions as audio, phone, cruise control, multi-information display. The expansive windshield and large windows provide a great view of traffic road conditions. The Optitron gauge and 4.2-inch TFT display are perfectly placed and easy to read. The leather-covered shift lever is mounted on the dash. The Super Gundia Elite is powered by a 2.8-liter 1GD FTV diesel engine that maxes out at 176 PS at 3,500 RPM and 450 Nm of torque from 1,600 to 2,400 RPM. Made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission that sends power and torque to the rear wheels, the engine is relatively smooth and quiet for a diesel fuel powertrain. The 1,990mm height means the Super Gundia Elite can park in most underground and multi-level parking lots. It is also very maneuverable for a 5,300mm long van with a 3,210mm long wheelbase or perhaps with a relatively tight 5.5m minimum tire turning radius. Variable power steering also allows for light steering feel going slow, great when parking but heavier and safer at speed. The Super Grandia is sure-footed on the road, riding on a suspension system that features McPherson struts in front and four-link coil spring in the rear. The brakes use ventilated discs on front and rear wheels. The High A Super Gandhi Elite is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense, advanced safety technologies that include pre-collision system, lane departure alert, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beam. Adaptive cruise control is particularly helpful in maintaining proper speed limits at tollways. The Super Gandhi comes in standard with other driver assist and safety technologies that give driver confidence on the road. These include anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control with brake assist, hill start assist, as well as SRS airbags. 3-point seat belts for all 10 occupants, child restraint system with isofix and tether anchors, and Toyota vehicle security system. Is the Toyota Hi a Super Grandia Elite worth the more than 3 million peso price tag? It makes a pretty good case that it is. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase. Courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota We Go. Welcome back to Motor Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Those lucky enough to be among the first to get the all-new Honda Civic Type R got another treat, a day at the Clark International Speedway learning about their new ride. We are here at uh, Clark International Speedway and basically what we did was to provide uh, our customers and our friends from the media the opportunity to experience the all-new Civic Type R. Honda Cars Philippines invited the owners of the all-new Civic Type R as well as those of older Type R's to Clark for a comprehensive program of driving and track orientation to better appreciate the performance capabilities of their cars. 
Civic Type R customers were able to test the power of Honda's renowned high-performance hatchback through driving exercises and open laps. Aside from the performance driving courses and seat time on the track, the owners of the Civic Type R got a free 18-point vehicle inspection. Owners of the all-new Type R also got to test the new enhanced version of the Honda Log R Performance Data Logger, which combines its onboard computer and sensors with a new built-in vehicle app that helps drivers monitor and record a variety of performance parameters. So not only that we have guided lapping and learning all the features of the vehicles, but we also have a time attack of the go-kart where our dealer partners, our media friends, and of course our Type R participants can join and beat the time that was set by our president, Nakamura-san. The day ended with the awarding of certificates for completing the driving courses and those who performed well. I think if the every participant enjoyed this event, yeah, we want to try to continue such kind of event and also we want to gather more Type R customers we want to say, uh, now we are very sorry that there are so many customers still waiting the new type R, but uh, we promised we will import a second batch uh, middle of this year. The Range Rover Sport has arrived, completing the lineup of the premium SUV from Land Rover, now made available in the country by official local distributor Coventry Motors Corp. The launch was held at the poolside of the Solera Casino and Hotel. So we've launched tonight the third generation of the Range Rover Sport. So it first came out in 2005, and since then, around what, 18 odd years, it's gone through two versions, and now we've tonight released and launched the amazing third generation in the Range Rover Sport line. The Range Rover Sport is aimed at more owners who want to drive their own SUVs, especially in weekend road trips outside of the city. But if you want to have be driven, if you want to drive yourself and you want to have that performance, then you go for this that we've launched tonight, the Range Rover Sport. It's incredibly dynamic and it's a high performance SUV. Three variants of the Ranger Rover Sport are being offered locally. We've brought three models in at an SE trim level. Um, and you know, there's a choice between a diesel inline six cylinder, three liter, or you can have a plug-in hybrid, which is a three liter petrol, again, an inline six cylinder, super smooth, but mated up to 105 kilowatt battery. And that combined gives a mind boggling performance and a range of over 850 kilometers when you combine electric and the gas. Price wise, the plug-in hybrid is our best value at 13,490 because there's some great government support on bringing in this new tech. But if you still want to go for diesel, then the diesel is at 13,990, or you can have what they call a dynamic, which is a real slightly altered visually look, um, more aggressive, more dynamic looking, and that's 14.8. The Range Rover Sport will be the last major launch for the local this year with Coventry Motors focusing on meeting the huge demand for Land Rover SUVs. The next major launches will be happening next year when Coventry Motors rolls out fully electric models. The key is next year and the future because we start to go full electric option. And that we start to do from late 2024 for both Range Rover Sport and its larger brother, the full-size Range Rover. And then we go on a journey of transitioning all our cars to full electric. So the future um, is coming and it's coming really quick. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motor in public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.